it's a it's a multi. It was considered a multi-tenant facility, wasn't it? If I remember correctly. So that they had the lower parking ratio. You can guarantee that on certain days, you're not going to be able to park there. Yeah, it will and, be. And especially in the first month. Oh yes. But uh, it should come down to some sort of stable point, I would think. And it's, I, going, I and it's going to be seasonal with different people coming for different seasons, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So. Built additional parking spaces on their own, is that correct? We didn't require it or. Not require them to. Well, why did they do this? The Gander Mountain situation was Gander Mountain was privately owned. It went public and they had a massive building across the country. I mean, they did massive amount of Gander Mountains. Um, very generic, very cookie cutter. Uh, then Gander Mountain went private again and now they are going back and reevaluating and making modifications. Uh, you will be seeing a site plan next month for our Gander Mountain. Um, Outside, inside, what making? They will be expanding their building. So taking part of their, oh, no. Hmm. When we met with the representatives from Gander Mountain um, and they showed us their plans and we were like, uh, can you meet the parking requirements? Because we know that you've got way more parking spaces than you need. And they said, well, it probably will be a problem. And I said, look, you know, at the staff level, we've talked about this. I had, when John Hughes was here yet, I had him pull all these parking lists for me. And I said, whenever we get time, I'm going to bring this to the Planning Commission because this is something that we've noted at the staff level. Um, I'll just go ahead and do it this month. We don't have a big agenda. And uh, kind of go from there. So. Also include office buildings larger and you could establish you know what square footage that you have the larger um, no it would just be for retail just retail yeah because the office buildings already has a variety of lower calculations like one to three hundred and there's some other s stuff that with the office depending on the type of office that it is now the multiple use buildings that is a m office you know like multiple office but if freestanding office has separate lower parking requirements in our ordinance. I have any thoughts on, I know you met, you've got the Center for Mellow Mushrooms listed you know, and you've been talking about the big box and, and what have you, but do you have any discussion where it's really driven by a, a restaurant with high attendance and at some time taken, you know, that in the restaurant itself, in, in that case, I've, between a sports bar feature and all the time. Turn over there, you know, parking place has come at a premium a lot of the time. And that's because there's a couple different restaurants. Yeah, there. there's Whenever you have a small center and restaurants, that's when you usually find parking at a premium. And uh, um, the problem with that is it's hard. You don't want to have someone come in with a, you know, a, an empty bo a shell, I'll just say. And then they have a tenant that wants to go in there and it's a restaurant. You want to say, oh, that restaurant over there beat you to it so you can't have it. It's kind of one of those balancing things that they tend to work themselves out. Uh, the Mellow Mushroom Center, you're right, it's at a premium. Um, and I have seen people hover. You kind of, you know, do the going around looking for it and then they end up over at Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to walk a few extra feet, which, you know, after eating one of those hell zones, that might not be a bad idea. But, uh, <laughs> um, but at the same time, with the smaller centers, you don't want to automatically increase the parking requirements because if you don't have more than one restaurant, then you're over parking again. So. Right. Not limiting anybody. So, so you're going to uh, put together. Does anybody else have any other input they want to 
No, I think your observation is correct, though. I, th Ruth, this is kind of what, what I've heard. Okay, you, you haven't put numbers out here, but so I'm, I'm just going to throw some there. Looking at these <laughs> shopping centers and other multiple-use buildings, what I've heard you say, just to make sure, is less than 50,000 square feet, you're recommending we leave that as is. That maybe the 50 to 75,000 square feet, perhaps we could roll that back to four and more than 75,000 square feet, maybe roll that back to three and a half, no less than three and a half. That, that's, I, well, I'm, I'm putting some tenant, numbers to it, but <coughs> is that kind of what you're saying or am well, I hearing I'm something different? Well, I'm not sure you want to modify the multiple tenant is uh -huh. the issue. Okay. I mean, because like I said, I am not a shopper, so my observations may be during times that aren't the same time that your all's observations are. So the idea is that, you know, do we need to modify the parking requirements for multiple, for shopping centers and multiple use uh, buildings? Or is it good? I mean, in your experience in looking at these centers that I have listed, I mean, Kroger, I know for a fact, it's used. And as their tenant spaces are filling up, they're using all of their, their parking spaces. Um, you know, Kohl's, I drive by it all the time, so I probably see it more than the other one. So I'm very well aware of where they're at with their parking. Um, you know, Parkside Drive, that's not necessarily a regular activity pattern for mine, but I have been watching the Gander Mountain and J.C. Penney just because they are freestanding buildings and it just, it just jump out at you though. Well, they, too. they really do jump out at you when you go by those parking lots. And uh, so that's really, why I put it before you because I wanted to make sure that if we reduced it because I am recommending that we reduce it for freestanding large retail if you feel that we have um, multiple you know shopping centers and other multiple use buildings with too much parking then we need to reduce those but it's kind of your observations are very important with regards to that Trying, trying to achieve because all of these all of these properties on their own or in some form of added more parking not less every one of them except for Campbell Station retail which obviously couldn't but they added more they didn't they didn't want less they wanted more parking so and what is the what is the uh, Shopping center name where Panera Bread is in uh, Turkey Creek. I realize that's not in Farragut. What is that name? Because that's a parking nightmare there. Promenade. Yeah. Promenade. That's yeah. it. That's a parking nightmare there. <laughs> yeah. In, in fact, I go. Part of it has to do with <laughs> Part of it has to do with the circulation and the design of the parking lot more yeah. than the parking itself being a problem. Uh, it would. <laughs> It does get full, but your maneuverability in it is very limited. Maneuverability, that's the but word. Yeah, it's that's not. what I f have found frustrating in there is. Yep. It, it's, it's not. So car fights it's, there then. <laughs> yeah, it's like so. <laughs> well. the, narrow, the narrow lanes. <laughs> well, it's very constricted with the configuration. You, It ends up, with the way it's designed, it almost creates a gridlock. Hmm. Because you got people trying to back up and... But I don't. I mean, but yes, it definitely gets full. But it's, but it's aggr. But it's, the situation is aggravated because you get grade lock and people can't get out. Yeah, you don't want to go there at Christmas. But we're we're not creating something like that, are we? By lessening the number of spaces. That would be considered a multiple use building, shopping center, and a multiple use, and that's, you know, so that kind of, although the design is different, that's what we're seeing with the other centers. Correct. I mean, we're not going to tell Coles to lose a few spots, right? Rip them out. Yeah. But what it does do, trees. but what it does do <laughs> is that um, as folks remodel, like we are going to be seeing with Gander Mountain mm -hmm. next month, is that they've watched their parking lots. You know, their managers are here and they're like, you know, we got a lot of extra parking spaces. Corporate is coming down. We want to make modifications. We're at our 70% lot coverage and we can't go anywhere except the parking lot. And if we, if we have 
a lower parking ratio, it gives them more flexibility with what to do with it, I guess is probably the best way to put it. Discussion tonight, do you have the information you think you need to put well, together something? Ron started going down with, do you want to modify the multiple tenant shopping center parking requirements or in your observations, you know? I wasn't, rec I was just asked for a point of clarity yeah. to make sure. Now, now I, as you talked more, now I'm clear on what you were, I was, I was yeah. misunderstanding. But, you know, I, I would offer this commentary and it's really, really in the same vein that that uh, Ron Rochelle had mentioned. I, since we're not really having any issues, everybody's really building above it. I'm, I'm fine with just leaving it alone for now. <laughs> I, I understand, but I, but I would rather deal with that by itself than, de than go through and change everything. <laughs> I, get you, I get your drift. <laughs> we won't be here next month. <laughs> You're gonna be on spring break, aren't you? Hmm. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you.